you have the boundary between the Pacific Plate to the south and the North American Plate to the north. The central Alaska Range is located here on the order of 500 kilometers from the plate boundary. The location of this far field of Chukana Mountain Belt is a question that's puzzled geologists for decades. I'm going to show now the three dimensional thermal structure and viscosity structure for temperature slices. As you can see, this cold, north dipping Pacific plate. And as we continue eastward, subduction zone changes where we have this flat slab subduction. And the central Alaska range is located just to the north of this flat slab region. Now we'll load up these slices for the viscosity structure. And what you'll notice is not just in the old riding plate, this is where the Denali Fault was implemented into the model as a shear zone. One of the things that these models investigated was the relative role of the flat slab subduction and this Denali Fault. We're going to pull up now is an isosurface of the viscosity. And this notch here is outlined as Denali Fault. And the central Alaska range is located right here in it. One of the consequences of including this Denali Fault is that you separate this piece of South Central Alaska from the rest of the North American plate. So this piece of Alaska has been called previously the Wrangell Block, and uh, GPS data and geological data indicate that it's moving semi-independently from the rest of the North American plate. And what these models show is that the motion of this Wrangell Block is being driven by the motion of the flat slab subduction. And it's this flat slab subduction that's essentially driving this ring of water into this bend of the Denali Fault where the central Alaska Ridge is located and causing this mountain building, you know, the tallest mountain for North America. The combination of flat slab subduction and Denali Fault that can explain this question of the central Alaska Ridge that has puzzled geologists for decades.